I'm Andrew Prince. I'm senior SEO analyst at the law offices of James Scott Farron. Yes, the ones in North Carolina with the crazy commercials. Um, I have worked for a couple of different agencies in the triangle and I've now gotten to the point where I work in-house. So I've worked exclusively in SEO for the last handful of years um, and I've gotten to this point now. SEO stands for search engine optimization, which is just about all anyone knows about SEO, if they know anything at all about it. Uh, I think before I started in SEO, uh, it was a marketing 101 exam question in college, and that's just about all I knew. Uh, so now that I actually know more about it, I can share some with all of you. So it's the art of attempting to appear in search engines like Google or Bing or Yahoo and persuading people to interact with your website. Uh, the really great thing about SEO is that it's free in a way. Uh, so it's not like paid ads or Yelp ads or Home Advisor where you're paying for clicks or for people to see your brand. It really is. Uh, kind of free traffic from search engines, which is really advantageous for businesses long term, because you don't want to have to pay for everything forever. So if you can sort of optimize and tweak things on your website to be able to show up in search engines, uh, it's, it's a really great high growth uh, marketing channel because uh, it's free. Um, but it takes time. If you see someone that says, hey, uh, I want to hire someone to, to do SEO and, and get results and rank number one in two months, uh, run the other way. Uh, SEO really takes some time to do well, but uh, like I said, long-term, it's a really great marketing channel to be able to scale since it is free traffic. Certainly do uh, research and, and a wide variety of it. So, I follow many SEO professionals on Twitter. I sign up for e email newsletters, go to professional meetups. Uh, so I really am, am gaining a lot of knowledge from various sources and it helps in a few ways. One is that uh, actually last week there was a, a Google algorithm update um, and it's always changing and understanding when new features come in search results. So there used to not be the little people also ask section where you click and it, it answers a question, but then more questions show up. Uh, that's just one example where being able to do research and understanding what's changing in search results is very important. And then a couple other ways that it's advantageous for me to do a lot of research for SEO. Uh, one is testing. So with SEO, what works on one website may not work on another website. So being able to read and see what others have done on their websites to understand what I should test on the websites that I work on, uh, it's, it's very helpful. And then the second thing uh, is that working with other departments or practices and understanding how they think and work is crucial as an SEO. So working with designers, developers, social media managers, C-suite executives, uh, SEO is a very like nuanced and niche topic that you have to spend a lot of time in. And so being able to research and understand how to effectively communicate SEO to different stakeholders is, is vital in this role. So starting off, if, if you're just launching a brand new website, use paid. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, SEO can take time to do it the right way. And the easiest way to get eyeballs on your website from the get-go is by paying for traffic, whether that's Google Ads, uh, whether it's Home Advisor, there, there are many different ways that you can spend money on ads online to get people to your website quickly. So I would say to start off, if you're a new website, pay for traffic to come in. Uh, and then as time goes on, you build more of a reputation, people understand who you are. Uh, look at where you may not be able to rank for SEO. So if you're in the home industry and Home Depot, Lowe's and Menards rank one, two and three, you may never get higher than fourth. So what you want to do is pay for Google ads so that you show up at the top and then it's those three. Uh, so you have to kind of do some research and understand 
where may I sort of max out where I can rank my website because there's big national competitors in this space uh, and, and just continue to pay for ads there. Uh, always work on, on earned. So building your reputation is not something that should ever stop. Uh, and then it also helps with SEO. So selfishly, I'm going to bring uh, earned and, and SEO together because uh, like the little blue hyperlinks that you can get on other people's websites if they cover your company, uh, it's kind of like a vote of confidence from a search engine to your website. So if you run a, a PR piece and somebody picks it up and they talk about it on their website and they kind of cite you and, and link to your website, it can really help you from an SEO perspective. So a lot of people don't understand that relationship between the earned and the owned that you're not just getting people to know about you, but you want them to be able to share in a way that it links back to your website as well. And then owned, uh, it takes time again, and not just SEO, but like building social media followers. One big mistake that I see companies doing is they pay uh, a lot of money on ads and say, oh, when we get time, we'll work on SEO or we'll work on engaging on social media and they never quite get there. So there has to be a strategy in place uh, to be able to kind of transition some of that paid to the owned because again, it's free. So yes, pay for things up front, generate some interest, uh, get some earned going and transition it to owned over time because that's the best way to scale it and cut down on some costs. So, uh, you know, start with paid, always build your earned and then over time transition to owned because it's the most scalable channel that you can have um, to being be able to bring people to your website and, and drive business that way. Uh, working from home, especially 800 miles away from where my company is based, having consistent conversations with a team is key. So right now it's built in where three times a week I'm meeting with other team members uh, in the morning where we talk about work, but we also just chat. Uh, staying connected is a big deal and while working from home. There is no water cooler. Uh, something that I loved when I worked at agencies, I would walk up to people and say, hey, what are you working on? Because I found that I could really learn a lot about what they're doing and, and how to interact in that setting. That doesn't happen here. You know, you could shoot emails back and forth working from home, but there isn't that face-to-face -face impromptu interaction. So you have to build it in. So a few times a week, being able to even jump on for 15 to 30 minutes to talk about work, life, what have you, staying connected is, is a big deal. And then the other thing, uh, you can see the doors behind me. I will take my phone and put it on the other side of the door and close it. Uh, and not look at it at all. Working from home, I think the fear of a lot of business owners is, are my employees being productive? Are they screwing around? Uh, I make sure my phone is in the other room, and I like to set a reminder of an hour or two, I'm going to focus and, and get things done, and then I can go out and check it. Uh, and then the last thing is making sure I take intentional breaks. So a couple times a day, I'll go take a, a 10 to 15 minute walk around the neighborhood, uh, again, you don't have those distractions of being in the office and talking to people or somebody coming and asking a question. So it's okay to be able to take that time for yourself and go out and be on your phone or clear your mind or do what you have to do. And then from the other angle, uh, people in the office, something I'm seeing more is they feel bad that I work from home and I don't want them to go out to lunches, go do things together. There's a trade-off working from home. I don't have a commute. I you know, am able to just, just jump into this room and work. And I know I'll miss out on some things in the office and that's okay. People that work in the office, they should build a great team environment and culture there. Uh, it's, it's, on me that I'm missing out on those things, but there's certainly a trade-off uh, from being at home and, and kind of the cultural piece that I understand I'll miss by not being in the office. Social media is interesting. I never quite understand what I should share or what I or where I should share it, but 
Uh, what I understand is I have a deep passion for SEO and I should be able to talk about those things. But then selfishly, I understand the, the benefits of SEO through social media and how that works. So like I mentioned earlier about having another website linked to you, uh, if I have a big article that my company has released, I'll make sure that I share that article on social media because hopefully other people pick it up and want to put it on their website or generate conversation that way. Uh, being able to use certain phrases or hashtags that I know people are searching for. Uh, I always put it on my Instagram stories of things that people are searching for because I have insight in the data of 250 people every month are searching for X, Y, and Z. And it's, it's a fun thing for me, but also in the back of my mind, when I'm sharing some things on social media, I understand um, this is how people search and how they talk. And it shouldn't just be used for your website. So being able to do research about SEO really gives you insight into your audience to be able to understand how to talk with them and engage with them on social media. So it, it's funny because people see SEO as kind of one vertical and one thing, but I like to say uh, companies would not need to hire an SEO person if every person on the marketing team understood how to do their job with SEO in mind. And so that includes a social media person, a developer, a designer, what have you. So uh, I love the fact that my job exists and I get to do what I do and it does impact uh, how I communicate with others or share things on social media. But uh, you know, social media and SEO are kind of brother and sister because they're always evolving and changing and, and you know, how people interact with, uh, you know, the, the different platforms is always evolving. So it keeps me on my toes and I love what I do.